And strange. what is it that you love about this particular style of metal? It's just so brutal, and there's lots of melody, and there's lots of room for expansion and right. different takes on it, depending on where culturally they're from. And um, would you consider your band to be part of this family? I'd say in a way, yeah, it would definitely be part of it, for sure. Because I think a lot of your stuff is also kind of on the epic side that maybe yeah. 10 years ago people wouldn't have considered Vesperia a melodic death metal band, but... Maybe 10 years ago somebody wasn't doing that back then, but yeah, right. at this day and age, I think uh, we can... Right. We can make a case. Definitely. It's always changing. Absolutely. Greetings, everyone. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2016, and welcome back to the Banger Bar for the kickoff edition of Lock Horns, where we lock horns over the heavy metal family tree that we created many, many years ago for our first film, Metal A Headbanger's Journey. Many of you know how this works. You out there have the opportunity to tell us in here what you think about a particular subgenre of metal, which this week is melodic death metal, a close favorite of mine and my guest in the studio. And so make sure that while you're watching, you subscribe to Banger TV because we are trying to create the global digital all metal channel. Another thing I want to mention that's brand new is Banger is now the official curator of metal on Apple Music. We have a brand new playlist up on Apple Music, which you should go and check out because we've personally created some pretty killer playlists that are locking into what we do here and for our review show, Overkill Reviews. Enough from me, this guy. This is Morgan Ryder from the Toronto Extreme Metal Band, Vesperia. Welcome, hey. sir. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining me in the studio. Glad to be here. Today. Um, tell me a bit about your band and the metal that you guys make. Uh, well, we call ourselves Epic Metal. First of all, we are Vesperia. We're a band based out of Toronto, and we like to play this style, again, called Epic Metal, which really to us is an amalgamation of orchestral music and melodic death metal. Mm -hmm. So put the two elements together, and that's basically what you've got, big, epic, fast, brutal death metal. Fantastic. You guys recently played Vakken, too. Yeah, we did uh, Walk in 2015, and uh, we actually won the Walk in Metal Battle over there. Yeah, Definitely an experience playing Walk in. Even if you aren't on the playing side of it, if you get to attend, do it one day because it's amazing. I've watched the footage. It's a pretty great performance. You should check Thank it you. out as well. Tell me a bit about how you got into metal. What's, what's your story? Uh, well, from a young age, uh, I would get a hold of my dad's Judas Priest and Metallica tapes, and uh, they'd find their way into the tape deck, and I'd be listening to those, and... Always, as I aged and got older, I'd always be looking for something heavier, something faster, something a little more raucous, and it kind of led me up the path where I've gotten, and uh, yeah, that's why I got into death metal. And yet, you know, there's obviously a lot more extreme stuff out there on the metal spectrum than what you guys play, and a lot of the bands we're going to be talking about oh, today. So you still like a little bit of melodicism in your metal, I guess. I love catchy tunes. I love melody. Absolutely. Cool. Right on. Okay, so this is Morgan. This is Sam. We're going to be locking horns on melodic death metal. So as a first step, and we want your feedback on this, is let's come to some agreement around what melodic death metal actually is. So in your opinion, Morgan, what are the key characteristics of this style? The brutality of death metal, the speed and aggression of thrash, and I would say the, the melody, harmonies, and lyrical themes mm -hmm. of classic metal. Mm -hmm. I mean, at its inception, the way I thought of it was, you know, for myself and a lot of us who grew up on extreme metal, we never thought that you could bring Iron Maiden harmonizing guitars into that world. And, you know, some of those early bands like At The Gates and Early In Flames started to do that, which was pretty exciting. But now it's commonplace. Yeah, bands all over the world are doing it now. Mm -hmm. and fusing those styles and creating melodic death metal right. and it's it's definitely exciting to see how that's evolved. And what about lyrical themes? It's it's I guess it's not a style of metal that we really think necessarily of lyrics like say power metal or maybe the new wave of British heavy metal. What are your thoughts on lyrics and melodic death metal? I think it's totally subjective about you know, where the person's interests lay and mm -hmm. where they're from. I find a lot of the, the lyrics I'm 
reading, the bands I'm listening to. Mm -hmm. It's personal struggles, uh, yeah. human psyche, yeah. um, folklore, mythology, history. Right. Right. History, absolutely. Right, right. I mean, there was always, at least in the early bands which we have on here, there was always, there was a grain of kind of social commentary in there, and maybe this is, you know, where it was ten years ago. But bands like At the Gates, The Haunted Arch Enemy, there was there was an element, not necessarily of punk rock by any means, but it wasn't necessarily fantastical. It was grounded mm -hmm. in something. I don't know if you have a perspective on that. Mm, yeah, absolutely. They all seem to be kind of working around the same ideologies and sort of. I, I noticed a lot of the bands in the early stages of the of the genre sort of had this kind of sound that they they all kind of built and yep. they sort of went from there yep, but for sure enough from us when we talk too much you're going to hear that sound off camera lisa latasur our producer rings this bell so we know when to move on and uh we don't carry on too much before we do anything else bit of housekeeping to do here 10 years ago when we created the family tree we boldly created this title Swedish extreme metal because for me and many others at that time it seemed to embrace a lot of what was happening in metal at that time and what was coming out of Sweden. Since then we've seen a lot of changes and a lot of arguments that really what we should be talking about is melodic death metal and really we should be uh, separating some of these bands. So right off the bat and this is in response to a lot of the feedback we've had from out there. First of all we're getting rid of that, sorry Daniel, and we're also going to move some of these bands off to the side, namely Unleashed, Grave, Dismember, and Entombed, because I think we can all be in reasonable agreement that those bands we could simply categorize as being death metal because they were Stockholm bands that didn't really have that melodic element that we're talking about. And now what we're left with is really um, what you might call the originators of this particular branch of the metal tree. So Lisa, are we going to go back to the audience for some input? What are we doing next? Yeah, we're starting to hear people who, of course, agree with you that these bands need to be the beginning of our, our tree, the roots here. Okay, so we've got MV Unit 3, Gothenburg Sound was the sound, Christopher Sanchez, Darkest Hour, Noop, and Gara Patero, Espana, I think we've seen you before, In Flames, Dark Tranquility, at the gates. Are these mm -hmm. bands that you are familiar with and are fans? Oh fans? yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, In Flames, Dark Tranquility, and At the Gates, when talking about melodic death metal, those bands instantly come to mind right. because they absolutely helped pioneer the genre yeah. and that's what we were left with. That's right. And and you know, I remember ten years ago, I mean it kind of seems like a long time ago now, but the sound that a lot of these bands and now we're actually at 20 years for uh Slaughter of the Soul was for me personally, and it's part of what inspired creation of a band that I played in, was I was really inspired by the sound that a lot of these bands were creating at that time. So hence why we called it uh, Swedish Extreme Metal. Okay, so what else we got out here? Jansen or Jansen Haneline, everything you left is perfect. Okay, we're done. Joking. Wake uh, Prog, Proj. What's left is quintessential mellow death. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. We need to talk about carcass. We need Everyone to wants talk to talk about, about carcass. carcass. Okay, we'll talk about carcass. I carcass do that. Absolutely. fucking rules. Yes, they do. Carcass, what are we saying? The Twitter poll result says 40% say yes, they belong, and 60% is saying no? Is that's this, what Twitter is this true? That's is what, this what Twitter is saying? That's what Twitter told us, but the YouTube chat is telling us different. We all know Twitter never lies, so uh, <laughs> anyway. T Bala 1988, I know Carcass didn't start out melodic, but I think they need to be up there. MV Unit 3 is back, Carcass from Decanting on i would agree yeah, thrash maniac 99 i never considered dark carcass a grindcore band at all i saw them as death metal mellow death anthony kerr mm -hmm. metal ricky etc what's your perspective on carcass morgan well to me they yeah absolutely they're a melodic death metal yeah. band i mean the first couple albums absolutely they're more grindcore they're definitely sort of coming out of their their punky stages right. and heart work came out yeah or decanting rather yeah. well decanting came out but heart work especially yeah. especially for sure 
quintessential melodic Change death lot. metal. Well, I would agree with you. I think when we created the chart originally, we were trying to avoid putting bands in more than one spot. Right. But I think there's certain bands you just cannot avoid it because I would agree that those first couple of Carcass records were, there was nothing melodic about those records. No. Right? And then when Amot joined and they started to change the songwriting, uh, the sound of the band changed. So there you go. We've added Carcass. They deserve to be there. Clearly, we got a few other comments there. Yeah, Mick Bertucci on Facebook. I really think it has to start with Carcass. Okay, so maybe we're getting a sense that they are the progenitors of this style. Also, Surgical Steel was fucking amazing. I would agree. Yeah. One of the best, uh, quote unquote, comeback, comeback records <laughs> we've seen in a long time. Time, amazing. Uh, still listen to it regularly, of course. Matthew Toralbalia, Bala. I think Carcass and Arch Enemy should be at the top, and Michael Amott definitely should be given credit. It's almost like we yeah. should just put Michael Amott. We'll just do up his own magnet <laughs> at the top. It's, it's Michael Amott metal, might actually be a, a <laughs> fitting descriptor. Delicious dishes. We need Carcass what in here, mean? damn it. Okay, we got consensus. Mm. Carcass, arguably, particularly Michael Amott, needs to be positioned as a top dog. Who else we got, Lisa? We've got Morgan, and he's gonna tell us who he thinks we forgot. Well, I put a lot of thought into it, and I kept drawing the same conclusion. I know that it started, well, obviously Sweden, the UK mm -hmm. with Carcass mm -hmm. and these bands, but mm -hmm. it, where would it logically go from there is Finland. Right. Uh, it'd be the closest neighbor, and okay. I think Children of Bodom should definitely right. be on this chart. Yeah, I mean, undoubtedly a lot of melodic elements in their sound. I mean... The classical style. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they maybe it was earlier on, they were kind of more on the thrashier end of the spectrum. Yeah. I mean, the lines get pretty blurry. Thrash, power metal. Thrash, yeah. power metal, because they had the keyboards. But mm -hmm. I think you've got some allies out in the internet world. Ben oh, Pooter, yes. Children of Bodom. Jensen Hanline is back. Ooh, yes. Children of Bodom needs to be added. And Dylan Dula, Children of Bodom. And Smoke 1001, no, 10,001 is saying that Children of Bodom needs to be added. Okay, well, I guess we just gotta do it, otherwise we might get attacked by the Metal Legions. We actually predicted this and uh -huh. have a magnet. What? So, yes. We have a magnet. We don't have to look at my Beautiful. useless imitations of Voivod script. It's official. And officially we can add Children of Bodom so much Lovely. nicer. Uh, I mean, we'll get, yeah. It's a clearly a sign that this genre is quite, how should I put it, embracing. Totally. Uh, it, it really is quite broad. Definitely. definitely. So... Uh, Fans from every corner. Yeah, yeah. We can all get along well, in the melodic death metal world. Except for Tyler. Except for Tyler. Tyler Monroe sticks his foot out and says, Tyler uh, says, Children of Bodom aren't a death metal band. Tyler, gotcha. I think you've got something here. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd like to hear if there's any supporters of, of Tyler. Well, Ben O'Malley says that Amon Amarth and Children of Bodom are stinky bands. Sounds like my four-year-old son. Dad, that's stinky. But they're important to the genre nonetheless. Absolutely. Fair enough. I mean, I, you know, again, we might be splitting hairs, but it's like it's what we like to do. Yeah. That, th uh, that children might be on that kind of thrashier end of the scale. They're def yeah, I'm thrash power metal, absolutely. Yeah, for sure, for sure. They've kind of got their their toes in a few different areas there. And Amon Amarth. Yeah, Ben brought up Amon Amarth. We okay. have them on our chart. Right. Amon Amarth, Dog God 666 says Amon Amarth, yes. Adriana Abrzuska. Definitely a Monomarth and Eli Unger, a Monomarth needs to be up there. Hmm. I, I, what do you think about a Monomarth? I absolutely agree that their core sound is definitely more of a death metal one. Yeah. There's a lot of melody and a lot of undertones going yeah. on in there. I think that would definitely classify them as a melodic death metal band. Don't want to put you too much on the spot. Give me your honest opinion. Are they becoming a band that's no longer cool to like? 
No. I, no. I think it's still cool to like Amon and Marth. Yeah, good. Absolutely. I like Amon and Marth. Me too. But I think with, you know, in the world of Game of Thrones, in the world of, of, uh, of, of the sort of insane obsession over all things Viking, they can kind of come across as being perhaps a bit campy. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, they've they've been doing that since the start. Before it was cool to do that, and right. it's just the times are catching up with them, I guess. Right. Wow. Good choice of words, Morgan Ryder. Ever the diplomat with the Mona Marth. <laughs> well, they're going up there. I guess where else are we going to put them? Unless we were going to have a Viking metal chart, they probably belong here. I guess there needs to be one at some point. Okay. What else? Death clock. Hang on. Everyone's having such a good time. Let's interject something a little more controversial. Let's do Death that. Because Death Clock has come up. Take your gloves off. Levi McIntyre on Facebook says Death Clock. Um, anybody else out there about Death Clock? I don't know about that. What do you think, Morgan? Yeah, the music's awesome. Yeah, fair enough. Are they really an ins inspirational band to be putting under... The with, with these bands who've been yeah. around forever and have yeah. amassed a huge following through yeah. their huge careers, their lengthy careers Fair at that. Yeah, but yeah. I, yeah, Death Clock started as, well, obviously from the TV show, but yeah. it became a real thing over time. Yeah, the music's awesome, but I'm not too sure if they'd be worthy of being among these bands. Well, I don't, may, I don't know if it's a question of worthiness. I mean, yeah. I just kind of like position them more along, say, like a strapping young lad or a fear factory. There's sort of that way more like mechanistic, almost industrial vibe to their sound. As far what as you, the music goes, think? Yeah. yeah, it got, kind of runs into that territory a little bit. Absolutely. Well, Newt Dahl says, nah, to uh, Newt Dahl is actually a lamb. Uh, Didshu says, there is no way to argue that Death Clock are not no, they're definitely mellow not. death. Okay. Well, I, I, you know, okay, fine, fine. This is what we have to do on this show sometimes. When yep. we don't know what the hell to do, we, we do this. We create a question mark and we just commit to not committing, as it were. You know? They're up in the air for now. Yeah, there you go, fair enough. They're absolutely a mellow death band. And Pierre <laughs> Sidgiel, are they an influence? Good point, Morgan. Death Clock don't belong. So let us know your opinions on Death Clock, people. I'm definitely on the fence. Don't know if they um, belong. Opeth, however, we've got people talking about Opeth. Uh, we mm -hmm. could probably fill an hour talking about Opeth in and of Good. themselves. Mike Lamoureux says, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say Opeth basically started melodic death metal when Orchid, or more so Morning Rise, came out. There, there wasn't much like it. Say what you will about Opeth now. They're prog now, but they need to be on this tree. Mm -hmm. Seolian Astro. Threonica, Opeth, Morning Rise, MV Unit yeah. 3 is back yet again. Opeth could be in almost every uh, genre. Fair comment. What are your thoughts on Opeth? <laughs> Absolutely. They could be <laughs> in almost every category. Um, yeah, the first couple albums, are there, I'm, and they continue to be very yeah. melodic. Yeah. Um, I just think as far as the, the, uh, the structures of the songs yeah. are concerned, <laughs> they're... they're, uh, <laughs> they're um, Definitely more on the proggy side. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's again, it's, we love to split hairs. Opeth's melody came from different places than, say, the melody came from with the, with the other Swedish bands. Yeah. We talk about melody in, in Opeth, it came from either the singing or that kind of more classical guitar. Whereas I would argue kind of if we're agreed that this is the core the melody is coming more directly from the riffs themselves. Maybe yeah. I am obsessing. Thoughts? Yeah, I think it, it, the inspiration is a little different for what Opeth were doing in their earlier days rather than what these bands were doing in their earlier days. For sure. And, and you know, not to get too geographical, Opeth were Stockholm and these guys were Gothenburg. Not that that matters. <laughs> it's not that far away. Lisa, what do we got? My favorite comment. Yeah, well, oh, you, it, you it, laughed it, hysterically it, off camera there, there and it is. threw us all yeah. off. Oh, Delicious Dishes says, 
No path. No path. Nicely delivered, delicious dishes. Uh, what else? We got anybody else talking about Opeth out there, Lisa? Or no, it's, it's, but they still want to argue about Death Clock. They still want to argue about Death Clock. Well, what are people saying? Anthony McAlexander, what the fuck? Death Clock are mellow death as hell, and they are one of the largest economies on Earth, the nation state of, of Death Clock. Uh, anybody else? No. Nope. Death Clock fell to the ground. That may or may not have been intentional sign. on my part. <laughs> Opeth. And maybe just out of uh, honoring delicious dishes, we'll just do a bracket in no front path. of um, Opeth and there. If I may, a quick uh, note to the people on the chat who have tons of band suggestions. We want to hear why. Yes, more about why, not just who. We know you're smarter than we are. New comments, Black Dahlia Murder. Leginny Koth, third. Uh, that just rolls off the tongue. The Black <laughs> Dahlia Murder, they've been one of the major players in recent memory from melodic death metal. Uh, T. Bala, 1988, says, I like Black Dahlia, I love them. I own all their albums and they for sure have melodic solos, but not sure I would call them melodic death metal. And lastly, Anthony Kerr is back. You can't leave Black Daily Murder off this list. How many straight devastating albums have they dropped? A little heavier on the death metal side, but no denying they are mellow as well. Thoughts? Yes, they are a fantastic band. Yeah. I actually uh, picked up a, a Abysmal when it came out. Okay. Fantastic album, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the thing with, well, my opinion yep. goes, I would put them more in the, the hardcore camp rather than the melodic right. death metal camp. They right. do have a lot of driving melodic death metal riffs. They certainly inspire a lot of bands to yeah. play. Yeah. I would just, I'd consider them part of a, a different movement of um, melodic death metal from, right. The, right. from the core right. understanding of it. I wouldn't put them under with these bands though. Well, we'll maybe put them off to the side and yeah. we need some people to make a case. And, and interestingly, um, because I love my geography. Apart from Death Clock, they're the only non-European band right. up here. So we are largely talking about a European style. Yes, which, absolutely. Which for some reason I always gravitated to, to even though we're Canadian, eh? Hypocrisy, Uriel Lara. Out of all the important melodic death metal bands, the one that gets neglected the most is the almighty Hypocrisy. They need to be included. All hail Peter and all hail Hypocrisy. Horror Master agrees Hypocrisy needs to be on the chart. Yeah, I mean, it's sort mm. of like Ackerfeld, Amot, and the last name I can never pronounce, so we'll just call him Peter. Yes. These are kind of the... These are the founding fathers. What do you think about Hypocrisy? I absolutely love Hypocrisy. Yeah. I think they're just cons insanely consistent with everything they've done. Though they have not in enjoyed the commercial success some of these bands have enjoyed, I yeah. think they have absolutely inspired quite a few of the players who have become right. the musicians in these bands. And I think that definitely goes to show that they're one of the more important melodic death metal bands. Perhaps get a little forgotten because Peter's production work is right. almost overshadowed the band in a, in a sense. He's, he's almost actually like behind a, He's like a Devin albums. Townsend in the yeah. sense that his producing career has been very successful. Absolutely. So maybe mm -hmm. slightly to the detriment of, of hypocrisy from mm -hmm. a popularity standpoint. The true SRX claims that hypocrisy is a Swedish death metal band that was a big player in melodic death in the earlier days, especially the fourth dimension onward mm. well maybe they need to actually be in there maybe just because they're swedish <laughs> and uh maybe not to be that guy but maybe i was right all along by calling it street st swedish extreme metal anyway <laughs> uh voracious souls 95 good death metal uh death angel reference there Holy where the fuck is insomnium and Pierre agrees. I never realized that Insomnian aren't on there. That's a crime. Admittedly, this is a band I don't know that well. Uh, Morgan, care to comment? They're fantastic. Yeah. They are uh, what I would call modern melodic death metal. I th well, they've been around for a, a bit longer, yeah, but they, yeah. they are definitely writing some songs and definitely inspiring the players to do it. And they right. are releasing some fantastic albums. Do and you know they where they're from? They're from Finland. They're from Finland. I think. Ah, interesting. 
I mean, we're kind of getting into territory perhaps where we want to make sure that the bands that are on here undeniably deserve the spot. And when I say that is, sure, we could come up with a list of 30 or more bands that belong. Uh, Insomnium, maybe we'll slap them up there and just see what people have to say. Do mm -hmm. they deserve to be there sort of from uh, the perspective of influence and impact? Absolutely. Um, maybe there is some uh, debate there. Insomnium. And I know this is a band that's very close to Morgan's heart because I'm aware that uh, they're going on a tour with them soon, yes. perhaps? You know, uh, about two months we're leaving on the road with them. We're going to do all of Canada with them. Cool. And uh, that band is Calma. Yeah, awesome. Yes. And um, you've played with them before? Yeah, we've done some one-off dates with them just cool. here in Toronto. But um, yeah, absolutely fantastic band. Mm. Uh, can't wait to share the road with them in April. And to my ears, kind of a good fit from a stylistic standpoint. Yeah, that's what the agent approached us with. He's, uh, he, he thinks we sound a sound lot like, like them. <laughs> <laughs> well, he thinks that we, um, we sound a lot like them uh, in yeah. a lot of ways. I mean, we, we definitely have our own characteristics sure. as they of have course. theirs. But uh, yes, absolutely. Worst okay. bands to be compared to? <laughs> of course. I would say. Um, so, Kalma, are there any additional comments about Kalma out there, Lisa? Not yet. Oh. One came in. You know what? I've only <laughs> got two more blanks. Mm. So, you know, we might have to be a little bit more judicious in our selection. So maybe let's sort of test the waters here. We've got Kalma. Uh, Jura Jurich is, is back um, saying Kalma needs to be up here. A Shroud Misery says, I feel dissection should be added because they are unique. They mix black metal and mellow death and are one of the best in the genre, mm -hmm. and Nazhtros, if I'm saying that correctly. Where are the big differences with uh, Black Dahlia Murder and At The Gates then? Well, that's a pretty good point, I guess. Hmm. Yeah. I would say Black Dahlia is a bit more it, thrashy, as you said, kind of more hardcore-y. Yeah, a little more belonging to the, the hardcore camp. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. We've got Scar Symmetry, Derek Jolie. Scar Symmetry belong on here. Uh, and Seolian Astrionica, how about Scar Symmetry? What do you think? Scar Symmetry is a fantastic band. I think they would be grouped more with uh, what I would say the third wave of melodic death metal. Okay. Um, yeah, Three I think they're waves. doing some cool stuff. I don't, I'm not sure if they're really introducing anything new to Right. The genre, but they're right. they're definitely a solid band, and they've right. released some very awesome albums. Right, Ben O'Malley says there are plenty of Swedish bands up there. Adding Scar Symmetry would be redundant. I guess that brings us back to the original point. Fair enough, but maybe Kalma. I'm seeing mentions of Amorphous out mm -hmm. there. Uh, Lisa, is that is that fair? Yeah, a few people bringing up Amorphous. I think Amorphous would uh, would do well up there. I know a lot of people tend to lump them into the folk metal category because they inspired a lot of folk metal yeah, bands. Yeah, well, they did come up in the folk metal discussion. Um, I, you know, I guess we're running out of room here. I chips are <laughs> down. I'm not so sure. Wilk Akeproj is back. Dissection has a bit more black metal in its sound than melodic death metal. I yeah. would agree with that. I I wouldn't see Dissection as a melodic death metal. Band and wondering how dissection themselves would um, feel about that uh, characterization. I'm not sure that they would agree, but so let's look in the uh, the question mark. We got death clock, we got opeth or nopeth, depending on your perspective, and we've got uh, black dahlia. We've also got one more blank. Alan Ketzer, really nothing on eternal tears of sorrow, winter sun, sky fire. Please, people. Please. Um, yeah, interesting. Winter Sun, Skyfire, these bands like Kalma, it's kind of, it's become so big. Yeah. You know, it's, these Finnish it's bands have a different, have a different sound to me, you know? They're, they're taking a lot more of the classical influence I've found in, or folk yeah. melodies especially, yeah. and bringing it into, into Maladeth. And yeah. I think they're doing a lot of special and unique things with their music. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, Scandinavia, of course, being such a 
hotbed of great metal. It's like, you know, we did Swedish extreme metal, we've done Norwegian black metal. Maybe there's a case for Finnish death metal or something of that variation. But the list would be like ceiling to floor. It would be long. <laughs> but bands like Kalma, you know, sort of live in that world like Winter Sun mm -hmm. as well. Francois Jeunesse says, what about the Canadian scene? Well, mm. Vesperia, I guess, would be up for contention. Yeah. Uh, you got to get your band members on there chiming in. Yeah, Hedge really, guys. Knight says Amorphous, yes. Their newer albums are a bit more modern, but the first two or three albums are very mellow death. And Hedge Knight also says that take out BDM and Opeth, add Amorphous and Insomnium. Well, you know what? It just so happens I have an Amorphous magnet Beautiful. kicking around conveniently that we could just put in there. I can get behind that decision. You I have a special place in my heart for Amorphous. Okay. I love everything that they've released. That's I think cool. they. Yeah, absolutely. Their, new, their earlier albums a lot more uh, death metal than what they're doing now. Yeah. But yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about leaving uh, Black Dahlia Murder over here. Opeth, Death Clock, Lisa, what's up? They're not feeling very good about you leaving Black Dahlia Murder. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enough about me. Stephen J. The Black Dahlia Murder needs to be put on the list. Their records throughout their years, especially since Ryan Knight. Join the band, X Arsis, add a whole new level of musicianship. And I mean, I would agree. These guys are fucking pretty insane yeah. when it comes to their uh, execution. Similarly, Anthony Kerr, I really don't see the core reference. Fair enough. If anything, they are just more death metal than most others on the list. Mm -hmm. But from Miasma, that was a good record. Yeah. Onward, they absolutely qualify. <laughs> Billy Carlisle. Holy, it's like the it's like the Black Dahlia Murder cartel coming yeah. out of here uh, out of the Midwest. The Black Dahlia Murder deserves a spot, and Pierre chimes in yet again, saying that Black Dahlia or Riot that would be a good album title for uh, Black Dahlia Murder. Well, fine. Yeah. Have your way, uh, cartel. We'll put them on there. Uh, uh, there's clearly um, a strong consensus out there that that band deserves to be on the list and perhaps you know if we put them in hardcore or metalcore or anywhere on the else on the chart people would probably go eh yeah we'll have quite, to come back and do it again doesn't yeah. quite fit doesn't quite fit lisa okay. what are you thinking are we starting to uh it's the final countdown for people to get countdown. their arguments in okay well we do have one more blank here on the board it's a blank or do we move opeth in or Death Clock in. In my opinion, which isn't worth much, neither of those bands really deserve to be there. I saw Witchery, I loved Witchery, yeah. but maybe they don't have, you know, they only put out a few albums, they clearly belong here, and obviously Kinship with The Haunted and other bands. Absolutely. Uh, Jura Jurich, Bellacor, not a band I know. The Crown, I'm just thinking of. Yeah. Uh, a great band, mm -hmm. uh, but haven't had a lot of output in recent years would definitely fit. Any bands that you got in your back pocket here that you yeah. think? I was I was thinking about chart? it on my way down. The um, I know there's been a multitude of bands that have come out over the, the last ten years that uh, are playing melodic death metal, yeah. and the melodic death metal sound can be bridged across a, a variety of styles and subgenres. But yeah. the one band I keep thinking about, and the one band that I'd really like to see on this list. <laughs> would be Flesh God Apocalypse. Okay, okay. Tell me I a bit mean, about their sound for people that don't, I mean, people know this band, but. Well, if in case you've been living under a rock, they are a symphonic death metal band with technical styles that are from Italy. They um, combine symphonic elements, orchestral sounds, um, operatic vocals with, with death metal. And they're one of the more exciting bands, I think, to be coming out. Yeah, and that are actually amassing a huge following yeah. and doing a lot with their with their music. Pretty impressive sound, and, and yeah. again, uh, kind of evidence of where like the death metal stuff is is flirting with power metal more. Obviously, Italy with Rhapsody uh, oh, yeah. being a big power metal band. That sound is sort of uh, known for coming from that part of the world. Let's park Flesh God for a moment. Mm -hmm. We've got Bellacore. This is a band I don't know. Morgan, you know these guys? I've I've come across them. I've got a few of their albums. Mm -hmm. um, they're a great band. I think they're from uh, Australia, okay. actually. But they're uh, cool. They're doing some good stuff. I mean, cool. they're 
I haven't explored them too much right. to give a, a right. huge opinion on Fair them. Fair enough. Hari GD is back. Welcome, Hari. Swallow the sun and daylight dies. Thrash. Mm. It's probably meant to be Thrash Maniac 99. Edge of Sanity is a pioneer right. for uh, combining death metal with guitar melodies and clean vocals. Tyler Monroe Evanescence. Carry on. Uh, Jansen, Hanline, I like Flesh God, but I'd say they're more technical or classical. Hmm. Absolutely, but is it another step forward for this particular subgenre? Right. right, fair enough, fair enough. Well, I'm, I'm willing to go with Flesh God for our final remaining blank spot, unless there's some serious uh, uh, opinions out there and just come after Morgan, don't come after me. It wasn't my idea. Uh, Delicious Dishes is back. Flesh God Apocalypse, good band, but way too symphonic and different. Well, we're gonna get, we're getting a bit of, uh, a lot of question marks mm. here about Flesh we're God. We're making people think. It's a bit of a Flesh God throwdown here on Lockhorns. Um, clearly, uh, some people feel that they don't want their melodic death metal to be too symphonic. Right. Clearly, brutal well, tronics, but I guess you consider Flesh God's way as an evolutionary step to mellow death. You know what? In honor of my guest, in honor of Toronto and Canada producing great metal, we're putting Flesh God on to fill out the last <laughs> spot. So, Death Clock, staying off to the side, Opeth. I think I, I feel pretty good about this. Yeah. I think these guys have um, better places on the family tree. You know, Carcass, undoubtedly, very important addition, uh, especially with, with, with Heartwork and Amat, as we were talking about. Mm -hmm. Hypocrisy, solid. Kalma, again, maybe you know, a couple bands here in the more symphonic direction. Insomnium, we got a lot of response on. Amorphous, band you love, you think mm -hmm. deserves to be here. And a lot of response on uh, Black Dahlia Murder. So if you don't feel happy, we need to hear it because we're going to wrap up soon, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken, Lisa. Yeah, as, as we let people trickle in with their last fighting breath, yes. um, let's talk about where this genre goes from here. Well, I don't know. I think it just gets more confusing, to be honest. It just becomes everything else. <laughs> yeah, I think that what we're looking at is, you know, like 10 years ago when we created Swedish extreme metal, because we wanted to have unleashed and graved and dismembered and entombed, and frankly, death metal was full. <laughs> we created ex Swedish extreme metal, but 10 years on, we've seen, you know, an explosion of bands, new bands, you know, also bands that probably got forgotten in the original run. So I'm guessing, you know, if we were to do this in even another five years, we would see, we would see probably, we would warrant, you know, Kalma and Flesh God belonging uh, somewhere else. The Count, this is a crime to not argue for Wretched. Wretched, I don't know. You know these I think, guys? Uh, I think they're an American band. Okay, I, I'm okay. not too familiar with them. Got to do my homework. Thank yep, you, yeah. uh, The Count. I uh, got to check these guys mm. out. And Will Alkiproj is back. Edge of Sanity is a classic, classic melodic death metal. There's more reason for them to be there than Flesh God Apocalypse. Well, I'm out of uh, cards, but since we did find ourselves a proper Bodum card, we could just do... Uh, this is going to look terrible, but we do but at least EOS for Edge of Sanity, just so everyone feels included in Lockhorns. So, mm -hmm. we could have Melodic Death Thrash, we could have Melodic Death Doom, we could have Melodic Death Folk, we could have a Finnish Death Metal, we could have Prog Tech Metal. It's never going to end, and that's what we love mm -hmm. about metal and locking horns. So, I think we're done. Lisa, you happy? Thank you, Morgan. Thank, Thank you, Vesperia. Check these guys out. Great Canadian death metal on the melodic side. Check out their stuff. Thank you for joining us. A reminder to subscribe to Banger TV. We're in the process of creating an all-metal global digital channel. Help us make that happen by simply subscribing. Also a reminder that Banger is now the official curator of metal with Apple Music. We have playlists there right now. Go check them out. 
Tell us what you think. There'll be new playlists coming up regularly that are going to tie into Lockhorns and that are going to tie into our review show called Overkill Reviews. So thank you, Morgan, Daniel, Lisa, Andrew, for joining us on Lockhorns. All of you out there for all of your well-honed opinions. See you next time on Lockhorns. <laughs>